G'day there, Rick here again, and today we're going to be talking about using folding or collapsing of headings and callouts in Obsidian Maps of Content or Notes to give you some compact appearance and allow easier scanning of those notes. So let's get into it. Well, the problem with a lot of notes or maps of content is that they can get quite long. And uh, sometimes, of course, maps of content may actually evolve to the point where they're exceptionally long documents and may need to be split into two documents. But you can also have notes that are that long as well. Now, one of the things that you always want to be able to do is to be able to scan a note or a map of content quickly so that you can reach the information that you need. So what we're going to be looking at here is how you can fold contents, fold uh, headings, fold callouts. We'll be showing you how to use those uh, to make the, make the note or the map of content a lot more scannable. And the first thing that we're going to be having a look at, of course, is the switches in the editor section of the settings. So let's go and do that now. OK, so here we are in Obsidian. And we're going to go down to the settings right down the bottom here on the left hand side. Click on that, bring up our modal, and we go to the top here, which is editor. And the two switches that we need to make sure are on is this one here for fold heading, lets you fold all content under a heading, and fold indent, lets you fold part of an indentation, such as lists and callouts and that type of thing. So these may be off, I'm not sure, it depends on your system, uh, but they need to be on so that the, uh, the little dots are on the right hand side. And once that's done, we can go back and start setting up our notes. So now we're back in our note, and I'm actually using the article that I wrote uh, for this video as an example to show you how all this works. So if we have a look here, this call out examples is a heading two. And you can see that it's got a little carrot next to it, a downward arrow indicating that the heading is expanded. If we click on that, you'll see that it folds. The heading, the carrot turns to a right hand arrow. And also there are three dots beyond the heading to indicate that it is folded. So let's just fold that out again. The other thing that you need to be aware of is that folding is hierarchical. So that means that if you fold a H1 note, the H2s and the H3s below that will also be folded. And the same for H2, the H3s will be folded and the H4s if they are also used in, in your markdown. And any, any callouts as well. So here in this uh, screen, you can see that we've got a H2 which is showing callout examples. We've got some uh, images here. And then this heading here is a H3. So if I click on this little downward arrow here, the carrot, and close it, you can see that all of that has gone in right down to the next H2. We open it again, and there it's back. So now we've covered headings, let's have a bit of a look at callouts. And they are a great way of conserving screen real estate. Now, I'm not going to go through this in the video, but it is covered in the supporting article for the video about a community plugin called Callout Manager. And you can see it here on the screen or some details of it, which lists all the types of callouts that are available. A lot of these are supported by Obsidian in their core, but one of the advantages of this plugin is that you can actually add your own and you can add your own icons and you can add your own colors and things like that. So very useful for that point of view. So. Go and have a look at the article. That'll, that'll show you the name of the plugin. It'll show you how to install it. And we can then go on to having a look at callouts and what we can do with them as examples. OK, so your syntax for calling out or using callouts is the same. Doesn't matter whether it's an info, a quote, a citation, uh, a warning, a fail, whatever it happens to be, it's always the same. So here you can see. Uh, it is a bracket. You f first of all, you started off with a greater than sign, uh, and then your square bracket followed by an exclamation mark and whatever the name of the callout happens to be. In this case, it's the note uh, and your other square bracket. Then you put the heading for it, and then underneath that, by pressing enter, you can actually put in the content that you want in the callout. If you hit enter at the end of this line here, Callout will exit and it will display like this. 
on the uh, in Obsidian. If you want to continue to another paragraph, simply use Shift and Enter, and that will allow you to do it. And the same thing, if you, you can also use these for uh, bulleted lists, and you can also use them for numbered lists. Now, when you use it for that function, hitting Enter will put it onto a next line for another bullet point or another number. So that's how you actually set your call-outs call outs <laughs> out uh, when wanting them to display. But there is another little thing that you can do as well, and that is how to fold call-outs. So we'll have a look at those next. So let's have a look at uh, some examples of how to use call-outs. Now on the screen here, this is a call-out that I've, I've just put in there as a, an example, as a note. And if we click on the little um, block icons here, that'll show us what the code is for it. All right, so as you can see, this here would have a carrot, a right-hand thing. We've got our brackets and that, and this is a note. And then we've got our content there as it's gone through, all right? At the end, I've just hit Enter, and of course that then, if we take go down here, it's then shown that block of text as a singular paragraph. But if you remember, I said you can actually include paragraphs by um, putting shift and space, uh, shift and return when you use it. So if we go back into the note, go to the end, hit our backspace key or our delete key, and bring that other one back up here, hit shift and space, shift and enter, I beg your pardon, again, and then do the same down here with delete, delete, or backspace, backspace, if you're on a Mac, and shift and enter, shift and enter, and then go down to the bottom. Uh, then, then we've got all that in the one call out. So that's an easy way of doing it. The other thing that you can do, which is worthwhile uh, knowing about, is that by default, call outs appear unfolded, if you like. But you can set it so that they are hidden. And the way you do that is that immediately after the closing square bracket of the note or the quote or the citation or the file, whatever it happens to be, put a minus sign, right? And then a space before you put your heading. And then when you close the note, it is, whoop, it is now closed by default with the right hand arrow next to it and it has to be there. So that can come in useful in conserving screen real estate in both notes and also in maps of content. Now the next one that I've got here as an example is a bulleted list and the same applies for a numbered list as well. So if we have a look at the code for that, again, it's just this, but using as an oh, example, I better be able to spell it a bit better. Example, right? Uh, an example of a bulleted list. And I've got points here uh, using the, the dash before it. So if we go here, now you, this is what I said, you don't need to hit shift and enter when you're doing this. You do have enter, point six, point seven. Enter, enter, enter. And that closes the note and you've got your example call out on the screen there. See the different icons are next to it? That depends on what you're using, example or note or whatever it is. Again, same thing applies. You can make this foldable by going back up here and after our closing bracket, put the minus sign in and then it is closed by default as well. Another thing that I should mention is that if you fold notes, uh, headings, uh, anything like that, and then close the note or the map of content, when you open it again, it will be in the condition that you left it. So all the headings will be closed or they will all be open. However you left it, that's how it'll open again. Well, a couple of other uses for being able to collapse or fold your headings is certainly with regard to doing online presentations and using your Obsidian Vault in which to do it. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, I've actually folded this note all up completely. Uh, and if I wanted to talk to you about here, this using headings to advantage, I can only have I only have to highlight that and I can talk about that particular aspect without distracting elsewhere. So I'll close the 
introduction as well because that shouldn't be open. So it's only that one that's being open that I can draw people's attention to. One of the other things that you can do is by using H2s and H3s and images, you can structure your maps of content so that they're meaningful when you collapse them, if you keep, keep that in mind. And that will give you a lot more screen real estate to look at and just take everything in all at once. Another little tip, uh, and it's in the article supporting the video, is that there is a, um, uh, a, a community plugin that you can call, install called Hotkeys Plus Plus, which will allow you to uh, expand or contract the line length of your notes or maps of content. Now, I use the collapsed. Um, view when I'm working. I prefer that, but occasionally I will want to have a look at the expanded view and I use that plugin and I have the, the keys Alt L set for it. So I can just go like that, which expands the, the note, um, or back again straight away. So that's another way that you can use uh, screen real estate to improve your visibility and a scanning ability on your notes and maps of content. Well, I hope this has been of some uh, help and assistance to you. So the ability to collapse headings, callouts on a hierarchical basis with your notes and your maps of content is just a great way of calling up a really brief, quick to scan note. And the longer the note, the greater the benefit because you're not scrolling all the way through it trying to find the information that you might be looking for. So if you experiment with these tools in your maps of content and your notes, I'm sure you'll find them very valuable. Good on you. Cheers.